tying in central banks and the overvaluation conversation we were just having as well, PIMCO's Joaquin Fels came out and said this, monetary overkill by central banks that seem more eager than ever to escape from bloated balance sheets and the dreaded lower bound of interest rates. Led by the Fed, the tide of global monetary policy is turning. When the tide goes out, we're going to find out who's swimming naked. Is that, is that the right cautionary tale to be sounding? Well, I think that's the old Warren Buffett quote about this. But I, th I, think that, I, th I think that this is premature about thinking that other central banks are really pulling back. I see the ECB, they slowed down their buying, but they're still, buy they're still going to be buying 270 billion euros worth of bonds this year. The BOJ is still going to be buying not the 80 trillion, but they'll be buying something closer to 50 or 60 trillion worth of J uh, yen worth of JGBs this year. I think that the big question really right now as far as who's next on central banks, Bank of Canada, they had this monster employment number before the weekend. They created more full-time jobs last year than they did the previous three years together. And so we're likely to see the Bank of Canada raise rates uh, January 17th. That's the next central bank to go. What about the ECB? We had David Owen on earlier, and he was saying he thinks it's possible by December they could actually raise rates, not just stop their QE, but actually raise rates. I don't know what he's drinking, but I wish I had some. <laughs> the, 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 the ECB has told us very frankly, they said, the sequence of events, they'll finish up QE, and then after a period of time, they will, be, uh, they will raise interest rates. But I don't think that period of time, that up until now, we think that they'll end the buying in September. So that only leaves them two months to really raise interest rates. I think that is uh, pushing the gun way too much. And I think it's listening to the hawks on the ECB rather than the majority. Uh, we had a question from uh, a viewer. It says, why do you think we're going to see 35 to 4% uh, fourth quarter GDP when Atlanta Fed is now at 2.7%? Also feeds into the Fed conversation of the strength of the economy. Yeah, so I, 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 they're right that the Atlanta Fed is just below 3%. The New York Fed, though, is closer to 4%. And so I was just taking a ballpark of that range. I think the market's a little bit more than 3%. But regardless of what it is, it'll be the third quarter in a row of above 3% growth. And even there, I'm really reluctant to give that credit to the current administration, thinking that the dynamics have been in place for quite some time. And how much of that's timing? Because we had some pretty weakness before that. And it's making up for some lost time, right? I mean, what's it going to be going forward? Right, so I think that even the Fed, I think they're forecasting around 2.8. I'm sorry, 2.4% growth for this year, which means that the fiscal stimulus gives us a small bump, but doesn't really change the underlying dynamics of the U.S. economy.